Hi, this is Dr. Nick. I'm the incrementalist here with incremental insights for a better business and a better health. So today I wanted to talk about the second wave and how we prevent this second wave. So there's a lot of focus on reopening. One of the things that we know about reopening um, is we shouldn't reopen too early. Uh, you know which business reopened too early? Jurassic Park. And look what that got them. So. Appropriate decision-making in terms of reopening and staging is very much the guidance that we're seeing throughout uh, the industry. But what's that based on? Well, it's based on declining numbers uh, of cases um, that are uh, identified by testing, identified by surveillance data. There's obviously some challenges with that. We've got some wide variation in terms of this uh, incidents of uh, testing capabilities in different states, and we've certainly seen that by countries. And that's really a, a key uh, deliverable in terms of understanding when it's appropriate to test. And there's certainly been some confusion about uh, the way that those numbers have been calculated and the tests that are contributing to that. But put that to one side for a second, and let's assume that those decisions are being made appropriately. You need to follow the uh, state guidelines, those vary by state in terms of what you've got to do, what's appropriate from a testing strategy. And as you reopen your business, the most important elements of this are to not contribute to the expansion or the increase in cases. How do you do that? Well, it's a, a multi-part strategy, but uh, it includes thinking about who can stay at home um, and still work appropriately. So distance, uh, virtual capabilities where possible, where that's not possible. Who gets added uh, and brought back? And is there some timing elements to this that deliver um, a, 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 a staged approach of employees coming back? And can you stagger them in terms of shift work? Can people work earlier and later? And then as you think about each of the employees, obviously dividing them up by risk. So other employees that are at special risk because they have uh, additional clinical conditions that contribute or indeed age that contributes to an increased risk of um, uh, getting COVID-19 and having uh, poor outcomes. And then as you talk to your employees, making sure that they understand all of the policies and procedures. And I think um, elemental to this is uh, clinical testing, and by that I mean not uh, testing for the virus, although that's appropriate in certain instances, but it's not a good indicator as best as we know um, uh, for, from an accuracy standpoint, and until that improves, it can't be the definitive form. So getting your employees to pre-screen before they show up, so actually doing this before they show up at your uh, workplace. And that includes uh, checking them for symptoms that we know are associated uh, with COVID-19. So um, the primary ones that are very indicative, uh, loss of taste or smell, um, those are very closely aligned with COVID-19, but don't always occur. But then it's um, more general symptoms that we find with flu-like il illnesses. So um, cough, um, runny nose, um, sore throat uh, and uh, running a fever. So one of the important things that you can ask your employees to do is to take their temperature before they leave. Um, and if they're not able to do it, make sure that that's part of the uh, process when people arrive, taking their temperature to ensure that they're not running a fever. Uh, we have some very specific guidelines if it's over 100.4 Fahrenheit. Um, and uh, they have associated symptoms or indeed just have a fever, then they should not be coming to work. If they arrive at work, you should send them home. They should seek medical advice. So pre-screening with uh, clinical symptoms that we know are associated and then uh, having those employees self-isolate until those symptoms disappear um, or uh, rescind without the use of uh, medication, particularly uh, Tylenol or Tylenol-like products uh, that will reduce your fever. Um, you can't be taking those and uh, then document that you've reduced the fever. So importantly, off medications and a reduction in fever um, allows you to bring your workers uh, back once they've recovered. Um, typically a seven-day period post any of those symptoms uh, resolving. 
um, would allow you to then say that they would be safe. And then finally, in terms of making sure that we don't have the second wave, we need to have the physical distancing, so appropriately in work, setting out the uh, uh, facilities so that you can maintain that physical distance between employees, between customers, and so forth, and making sure that everybody wears a mask. I wear a mask to protect you, and I ask you do the same for me, you wear a mask to protect me. So combination of all of these things, we can all work together so that we don't have these second waves. We don't induce this additional wave of uh, infection by limiting its spread. This is something that is within our power. It allows us to reopen up the economy and do so safely. Uh, and in terms of businesses, they need to think about this um, and include that as part of their process. If you need help with that, we're here to help. We've got uh, clinical guidelines. We've got uh, training material that can help you go through that process. And indeed, we've got experts in a variety of areas that can bring in the right resources to help you get back to uh, safely opening your business, your education, your gym, and so forth. I'm Dr. Nick. I'm the Incrementalist here with Incremental Insights for a better business and a better health.